Version 2022.10 of Home Assistant has released a new feature for dashboards called Subviews. These are especially handy for touch screens and tablets. Today we'll take a look at what they are, why you might use them, and how to create them in Home Assistant. So hang around. <laughs> Hi and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Subviews are nothing more than normal dashboard views with two important differences. For one, a subview will not appear across your top menu or tab system in your dashboard. But more importantly, when you drill into a subview, instead of having the menu across the top, you now have a back button that will navigate you back to where you called the subview from. Now, why might this be very useful? Well, let's take a look at this particular dashboard on a tablet. Now this is the same dashboard I just showed on the desktop, but it's shown on a tablet. I actually tried to design this dashboard to work well with a tablet so there wasn't a lot of scrolling, but of course your problem is trying to navigate this top menu can be a little bit tricky. So I'd already previously created navigation buttons, which you've always been able to do through web links or, or other ways, so that I could navigate to a particular menu across the top. But now as you can see, once I'm on this screen, there's no way to go back to where I was. Again, I'd have to go up here to the top and possibly scroll this to be able to go back to where I was. And I'd have to know which one of these tabs that I came from. And in addition, if I actually link to a view on another dashboard, I would have to go over to that dashboard and possibly scroll to find where I was. Now with these new sub views, I can simply navigate to a sub view. And now I've got this nice little back button that will take me back to where I was. So it's especially useful on a tablet, but we can also use it to help simplify and organize our existing dashboards. Now, Home Assistant will allow you to create as many dashboards and as many views on those dashboards as you like. I don't think that there's a limit, at least not a practical one that I've run into. So if you're like me over time and you've been using Home Assistant for a while, odds are you've created a whole bunch of dashboards and a whole bunch of views on those. Sometimes it's because some kind of new card or feature comes out that you want to try, but you don't want to mess up your existing dashboard. And what you end up with over time is a whole bunch of views. And some of these, like here I have a hold that is just a bunch of miscellaneous information or maybe an automations. Something that I don't use every day, but something that I want available. So your other option, which is also what I do, is to go in and create a special dashboard I call archives. It's not shown on the menu system, but I can put things here and save them and then bring them back when I need. So for example, here's my Halloween view that I only use for a month, month and a half a year. So I have to take it out of archives, put it back on the live dashboard, then after Halloween, move it back over to archives again. Subviews is going to solve this problem. So let's take an actual look as I go through and I create a subview in my dashboard. In my case, I have four different matrix or LED clocks that I use in Home Assistant. Each of these has their own view. So this, for example, is my basement matrix and it has its own view because there are so many controls over here. There are conditional cards. It takes up really an own view by itself. So that's one view there. But to get to my garage matrix, I actually have to go over to a different dashboard, come over to a different view, and here's the garage matrix. And then for my LED, 3D printed LED clock and my mini clock, they have yet a third view. So wouldn't it be nice to have a single entry up here called clocks and then have access through sub views to each of these four different LED or matrix clocks. So that's what I'm going to build right now. Now, as I showed it in the intro, it's very easy to take any view and turn it into a sub view. We simply go into that view, edit it, and we toggle this switch. Now that's going to remove it from the main menu. So how do we navigate to that? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new view that will contain links to all of our other sub views. And to do that, we're just going to go up here. We're going to add a blank card. I'm just going to call mine clocks. Again, this is what's going to show up here in this top menu. And so we do not want this to be a sub view. This is going to be our navigation to our other sub views. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we're going to end up with a blank view. So I'm going to add a card. Uh, for me, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to add a manual card here because I do happen to have a... I'm just going to add a header on here. So I'm just going to add that little little thing in there. So I'll go ahead and save that. Now we're going to add another new card. This is going to contain our links to those four different sub pages. So... I think I'll just try using a grid in here. It makes it easy. And I'm going to have two columns in there. 
Uh, I'm going to turn this off. And so uh, again, I'm going to use something in here called a uh, custom button card. This is one of the most versatile cards you can use in Home Assistant. So if you don't have that, uh, you know, you might want to consider going out to the Home Assistant Community Store and get it. Again, you can use web links here. Uh, this is just actually one way to do that. And just to save you the, the time and agony of watching me type, I'm just going to go ahead and just paste uh, the ammo in here for this first button. Again, look up the custom button card for the options. But the one thing to note here is this navigation path. Whether you're going to use Markdown or a, a web link or whatever, you're going to need to know the path of where the sub view is at. Now, normally that's going to be the name of your dashboard slash name of the view. I'll go ahead and let me go ahead and save that and I'll go back and just show you. So this was for the matrix and you can't see it here. If you look at that, here is the path except I'm in an edit mode. So let me just go ahead and click done on that. Here is the URL path. So it's again, the name of my dashboard, which in this case is Lovelace dash tablet slash matrix. So you'll need to know that, or if you're going to convert any existing items to a sub view, or again, if you've created new sub views, you'll still need to know what that URL path is. So now I'm back on, on my edit page for my navigation page. I'm just going to go ahead and paste the rest of the code in here to create uh, the buttons for my other sub pages. Go ahead and save that and go ahead and say done here. Now, if I click on basement matrix, you'll see it already is navigating and taking me over. But now once again, I don't have that, that back button. I have to navigate back over to my clocks page. So all we have to do is now we need to take this, this particular view and make it a sub view. To do that, we're just going to edit the dashboard, click the pencil next to the view itself, and say make that a sub view. When I save it and I say done, now notice I've got that back button. The matrix is now gone off of this menu, but if I click basement matrix, there we are with my back button. Now note that these sub views don't even have to be part of the same dashboard. Remember that my garage matrix and the other one on a separate dashboard, it still works just perfectly fine. Uh, again, as long as you've got that navigation and that URL path correct. Now, I do still have one lingering problem with mine. If you remember, my 3D printer clock and my mini clock were on the same view. And so right now, the mini clock doesn't go anywhere uh, because it doesn't exist. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you an easy way to split those, an existing view into two separate views and make those sub views. So if you need to split an existing view into two separate views that you want to use for sub views, it is pretty easy to do with a simple copy and paste. So I'm going to take this again. I want my mini clock on its own sub view separate from the 3D printed clock. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new page, which is going to be my sub page. Uh, or sorry, my sub view. I will come back and set that sub view in a minute, but I'm going to leave it as it is for a second. And now I've got that blank page. I'm going to go back to this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and edit this entire section it is all in one vertical stack configuration. I'm going to show the code editor and I'm going to simply going to select all of that and I'm going to copy it. Now I'm going to go over to my new mini clock page. I'm going to add a card. I need to put something in here initially, but now I can switch to code editor, take that and just paste the entire thing in and save that. And now you'll see I have an exact copy of the other one. So now I can go ahead, edit this, turn this into a sub view, and we will save that. I can go back over to my original page. Now I'm going to simply delete this card off of the original. So I'll delete that. So it is now gone, and I will turn this into a sub view as well. And then simply click Done. So now let's go back over to our clocks navigation page. And again, we see our four, our basement matrix, our mini clock is now on its own, 3D printed clock, and our garage matrix. And in the process, we've eliminated three different entries across this menu system across two different uh, dashboards. So you might be wondering if the menu item is gone from up here at the top for my basement matrix, how do I edit this page? Well, there are a couple different ways. You can go into the page itself and the edit option is still there. Or 
from this page here, if you go back into Edit Dashboard, notice that it shows up here as well. And it's also a way to take it back out of being a subview and make it a normal view again. Note that it is also possible to nest subviews. So if I drill into my subview for my 3D printed clock, notice I've added a link to yet another subview here, which is Halloween. That drills me down into that subview, which is on a completely different dashboard. But I still have the back buttons that will navigate me back through the breadcrumbs back to where I was. So by using these new subviews and a little bit of the copy and paste that I showed before, I was able to, just in a couple of hours, take this current tablet dashboard This was very confusing with all the different tabs across the top and was really hard, especially for visitors to navigate, and move everything over to a much cleaner view. Now notice there are no longer any tabs across the top. Instead, we have breakdowns to particular rooms. I have a few quick actions over here because, and some notifications, they're the things we most use most often. But it's very easy to drill down into a particular area or a sub view and navigate back to the main menu. And again, if you end up on a sub view that has too much stuff to fit on the screen, once again, simply nest a sub view underneath that. And then still have the navigation buttons to go back to the menu. So that's a quick overview of the new Home Assistant subviews available in Home Assistant 2022.10. If you found anything in this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you'd like to see more of my videos, click the subscribe button and ding the little bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I release new content. As always, I would like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.